Piotr Jan is 1-3 in, in his last four fights. That is a bad record. You take one look and that and immediately draw the conclusion. That dude is done at the top level. But he isn't. In fact, you can claim right now that Piotr Jan is the best bantamweight in the world and people will give it due thought. Some will even agree with the sentiment. At the same time though, the record stings and it will take a while for Piotr to get back into title picture. At one point, he was the boogeyman at 135. Now he is likely disillusioned with the sport itself. Feel sad for Jan what's happened in his career. If he just didn't knee Aljo, he's the champion. So what happened to him? It all began with a crippling shot to the head. Completely illegal name. Hey, I mean, this could be a disqualification. The UFC's lightweight division is lauded as the most competitive weight class in MMA. But the bantamweight division is not that far behind. Some of the best, most complete athletes call 135 their home. And much like in lightweight division, it is hard to be consistently great. Man, I tell you what, you know, when you look at the UFC's bantamweight division, it is just stacked. I love this division. Dominic Cruz is regarded as the bantamweight goat, but we have yet to witness a destroyer. And Burrell was supposed to be that guy. But once he got to the top, he was crippled. Then it was TJ Dillashaw, but he self-destruct. Cody Garbrandt could not manage a single title defense, but then, in 2018, a new candidate emerged from Russia. Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan was hyped up as the next bantamweight great even before he came to the UFC. In the regional circuit, the guy was peerless. Within four short years, Jan ended up in the top MMA organization, and he continued his vicious streak, outclassing all those who stood across from him. He was not too big for the weight class, and he did not carry the touch of death, but his fundamentals were on point, and he was a cerebral assassin, constantly improving minute by minute. Start slow, gather intel, and then no mercy. After victories over the likes of John Dotson, Jimmy Rivera, and Uriah Faber, Jan secured himself a shot at the vacant bantamweight title. Piotr Jan, though, man, he is a seasoned striker. It's yeah. really interesting to see him with a guy like Jimmy, who relies on his power and his toughness and, you know, his bulldog tenacity, to see him get lit up in those two rounds. And so Jan just set traps and looked for openings, and then when he finally found them, he just caught cracks them. The fighter on the side of the octagon was Jose Aldo. This was the perfect opportunity to kickstart an all-time run. And Jan made the most of it when he finished the featherweight goat in the last round, serving an extra sharp slice of brutality to really stamp his dominance. And no! Damn, Piotr Jan is no fucking joke. He made some big ass adjustments, switched stances, smashed him, and when he got on top on the ground, you see how strong he is? That's what I was talking about, like how physically strong he is. Now champion, Piotr Jan had a roster of hungry bantamweights to contend with on his path to greatness. But considering his performance at UFC 251, it seemed no mercy would continue to reign for the foreseeable future. Unlike Barrow, Dillashaw, and Cody, Jan had not displayed a single moment of vulnerability. He was not too different from fighters such as Habib and Islam, a mythical beast from Russia who was just on another level. For his first title defense, Pyotr Jan was booked up against Aljermain Sterling at UFC 259. Coming into the fight, Sterling was confident about his superior wrestling. Piotr has very good grappling. Um, I just don't think it's to the level of mine. And if I get his back, like those guys have got his back in the past, it's gonna be a problem and it's gonna be a short night. Just don't back up, cause when you hit that cage, I'm going to take you down and I'm going to drown you. But on fight night, it was Piotr Jan who out-wrestled the wrestler, outclassing Sterling at his own game after proving his superiority on the feet. Towards the end of the fight, it was clear that Jan was on his way to a victory, but in the fourth round, Jan connected with the knee to the head. His promising career tumbled into a tailspin. The knee was definitely illegal, and Sterling could not continue the fight. For the first time in UFC history, the championship belt changed hands due to a disqualification. And it's not even like, oh, was it, was his knee kind no, no, this was like a world star hip hop fight. It was a savage fucking knee. 
And I know there was some confusion. Rogan's like, well, Khabib said his, his corner actually told him to kick. I don't give a fuck if your opponent said rip out his eye. Dude, how many fights you have, Peter? You you know the rules, dude. You, you know exactly what's going on. You know you can't do that. Sterling walked out the champion, but Jan was still the undisputed best bantamweight on the planet. And now he had a rival. With the disputed champion sidelined due to neck issues, Jan competed for the interim belt against top contender Corey Sanhagen. It was another masterclass from No Mercy who captured the interim title and got himself a guaranteed shot at Aljamain Sterling. The date was set for UFC 273, and in the build-up, Sterling, already vilified by a large majority of MMA fans, took on the heel role and talked throughout the week. Fan support was firmly on Jan's side, and we all expected the true king to reclaim the belt and set order to the division. As you never know what a guy like Piotr Jan might do. I just had to come well prepared just in case he decides to do something illegal, you know? And I finally get to shut this motherfucker up, and it is going to be so sweet. It was a foregone conclusion in the eyes of many, as Jan had clearly demonstrated that he was the superior fighter. But at UFC 273, he did not get his hands raised. Maybe he fought too emotionally. Maybe it was a bad night. Or maybe Sterling was just better and came in more prepared. Whatever the reason, Jan was 0-2 against Sterling, and an immediate third fight was not on the cards. Despite the razor-close loss, Piotr was still regarded as one of the elite at 135. He just needed a little boost in popularity, and luckily for him, his next fight was against the most popular name in the division, Sean O'Malley. In contrast to Piotr, O'Malley had the popularity, but he needed a W against the top contender. The former champion was the ultimate test, and this fight was booked up for UFC 280. The odds were not as crazy as you would expect, but the popular opinion was that Piotr Jan would walk out of the octagon as the number one contender. O'Malley was just not good enough. When you have somebody like Piotr Jan that has the boxing speed, that has the grappling speed at that high level, and he's been gone five rounds many times before, this will be most certainly the highest test of O'Malley's career. Oh, 100%. But at UFC 280, Sean O'Malley rose to the occasion, and he hung in there with the former champion. For the first time in his UFC career, Piotr had met his match on the feet, while O'Malley surpassed expectations, Jan delivered a slightly more convincing performance. According to almost every media member, he had done enough to win. Did you think he won the fight? Some people are saying Peter Jan should have got the decision, but did you think O'Malley won? How did you score it? It's all, I, I, what's weird is it wasn't the way I thought it was with the judges' scorecards. I thought, depending on who you gave the first round to, determined who won the fight. But that was not the case, apparently. The Mentonweight division needed a superstar at the very top. And at UFC 280, the company found its wish. But it came at the expense of Piotr Jan. One year ago, he was on a warpath towards divisional greatness. And now he is on a two-fight skid and several victories away from championship glory. Just one mistake. And here we are. There is bad luck. And then there is Piotr Jan in 2022. If he hadn't landed that one knee, the guy would probably still be champion, and maybe we would be talking about him as Dominic's contemporary. This is the sport we love so much, after all. One perfectly placed kick can be life-changing for one contender, and one impulsive mistake can be detrimental to another's career. Sad thing is, Piotr Jan, after being through a tailspin such as this one, might not be the same fighter anymore. This was a vicious streak of bad luck, and you can only wonder what it does to the confidence of a fighter who is always just so close. Let me know what you think the future holds for the former champion. Can he rebound not solely from the physical battle he's gone through, but even more the mental ones? I hope you enjoyed this video. But for now, I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.